If you're on it's Emily Fox, today's video is going to be all about the best books that I've read in 2023. This is personally my favorite part in my end of year book series. I will link in the description box all the other videos. So the most surprising, the most disappointing, and the worst books of 2023, which is coming out just after this. I love giving you recommendations and I love when you come back and tell me that you've read them and have enjoyed them. And if you didn't, well, tant pis. <laughs> And I would love for you to leave your own list of best books of 2023 in the comment section. So let's get to it because this year was a really good year for me. I finally found so many new favorite fantasy series or just fantasy books in general that I've enjoyed. I was struggling for a couple of years. I feel like I kept reading the same thing over and over again. They were all like medieval inspired and by that I only mean that they had horses, no electricity, and a bunch of sexism. And I finally found a lot of really good ones. First off we have the Green Bolt Saga. I had read Jade City a couple years ago and for some reason I didn't continue until this year and obviously I finally read book two Jade War and book three Jade Legacy and I'm in love. This deserves so much more hype. I think that it took me so long to actually get to it because the premise in general is not necessarily right up my alley. You're following essentially these two gangs, these two family trying to get control over the city. And the magic system is interesting. People that were born there can have various degree of capacity to control the magic power through Jade. And then book two becomes bigger and bigger, the world, a lot of political intrigue. And I found myself really sucked into it because of the characters, which I've complained about that in the past. I feel like sometimes I just don't really seem to care about the characters as much as everyone else. Not here. Uh, the author ruined me, my poor little heart. I got so attached to characters, they went through it, and you go through it with them. You're following them through their whole life and how they're trying to adapt to the world becoming more modern. The Allen finally opening up their doors to the rest of the world and the consequences of that. And I just, I can't recommend this enough, frankly. I did read two novellas that are prequels. You have to read the series first just a heads up. They were also good, but just this series in general, I will keep raving about it whenever I do a video about the best fantasy books or series. This will be on it easily. And they were chunky, but absolutely worth it. Speaking of chunky fantasy books, um, look at this one. This is one of the biggest ones that I've read this year, and it is A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. This is the prequel to The Priory of the Orange Tree. Yes, you can read it first. I actually do recommend starting with this one. I found that the characters, like you're following multiple point of views, they're just more equal, all strong. Uh, very interesting character, the world building, the magic system, there's a little bit of sapphic romance, dragons, if that's your thing. The world building is, I think, the strength of this series, and it's a big battle between good and evil. That's basically what you need to know, and yes, I got sucked in, read the whole thing, and I've been raving about it ever since, so if you have heard the hype for the first book, I would recommend reading this one because my biggest complaint personally in the first book was that we didn't get enough about, you know, the witches, the people with the magical power in the Puri of the Orange Tree, and you finally get that in here, so I'm satisfied. If I could force you to read one book in this whole video, it would be this one. This is Blood Over Bright Haven, and this is the same author as The Sword of Kaijin. This one got a little bit of hype. It is a self-published book, both of them were, and amazing amazing I think this one is even better because you get sucked into the story chapter the first chapter like right away so for the prologue you're following the remnant of this tribe that are trying to make a run for it over this frozen lake trying to make it to the safety of the city and they're just going through it and then chapter one you're you fast forward a couple years where you're following this young woman um she has spent her whole life trying to become a for some reason I can't remember the exact name but a mage and it's solely been men and once every 10 years, they let one woman try to pass a test. Obviously, they always fail. And she spent her whole life trying to do that. So it's a bit dark academia, a little bit of studying and research. She is trying to use the magical powers to do things. We're going to keep that vague. And you have some unlikely friendship. And I just got, again, so invested in the characters. The magic system was really interesting. The world building was interesting. I feel like it has similar themes to something like Babel, if you enjoyed it or not. I would still recommend it. I do feel like the messages are very obvious, but I still end up really enjoying myself. And like I said, if I could only force you to read one book this year, it would be this one. I feel like it deserves so much more hype. Obviously, it came out this year and it is self-published, but still, I will be raving about this nonstop until you all read it. Actually, a few of you already did and already loved it, so definitely check it out. Oh, this one also hurt my feelings a lot. So if that's your thing, even if you're not a big fantasy reader, 
I would still read it. Let's take a break from fantasy and let me recommend something depressing. Would it be a favorites video without me recommending something dark? I definitely like depressing books in general and the wall is there, it's right there. This is an older book, it was published in the 60s, and it is like a little bit post-apocalyptic, kind of speculative fiction. You're following this woman who goes on a trip with this couple, they go into the mountain in their cottage, and the couple decides to go to the little town to do things, and then they don't come back. So obviously the woman tries to go investigate, figure out what happened, and she realizes that she is stuck behind this invisible wall. So she spends the rest of the time trying to survive, you're definitely following her day to day trying to live, trying to feed herself and just survive. And she's stuck with only a cow, a dog and a cat for companions. So if that's your thing, if you like survivalist kind of stories, definitely character driven, not a ton of happens, and you like to suffer. <laughs> I would highly recommend this book. The ending is definitely on the frustrating side, spoiler free, so definitely keep that in mind. It's not the kind of book that you get all the answers. It's definitely a book that you're just following her, trying to survive and thinking about her life in general. And there's also a movie that I did watch and it's equally depressing. I do find a book better, basically always the case, but if you want to check it out that way, I would recommend it. It was hard to find in Canada, but definitely worth it. I think it's a German movie. And yes, I, I will continue to rave about this. Definitely something different from everything else I've been reading this year, and I'm a big fan of speculative fiction, apocalyptic kind of settings, so this is unique for sure. Okay, the next series, also painful, but different for me. This is more like contemporary fiction, maybe historical fiction. This is book two and three in the Neapolitan Quartet. Those who leave and those who stay, and the story of a new name. You might have heard of My Brilliant Friend. This is book one in that series, and oh my gosh, I am so obsessed with these. Again, not my main genre whatsoever, but you're following these two women throughout their whole lives. Book one starts with that. You have this woman writing their whole story, and she's in like their 60s. So you start with book one when they're children, them developing this complicated friendship, and then in these two books you're following them as young adult and my gosh do they make awful decisions and it's like watching a train wreck but fully invested. You're following them trying to get out of this poor neighborhood in Italy and them trying to either get some education or either get married and kind of seeing the consequences of that. It's not just about that though, you find them trying to figure out what to do with communism and the world becoming more modern and the effects of that while again trying to navigate a very complicated relationship between each other. And it's just, I'm obsessed. I'm absolutely obsessed. I can't stop reading them. I have the last book and I kind of didn't want to read it just because I don't want it to stop, which is always a good sign in 2024, probably during the summer, because this screams summer to me, and yes, I will continue to read about this. If you are a big contemporary reader, you might have already heard of this, and absolutely worth it. There is also a TV show that I started, I had to make myself stop because I will finish it otherwise, and I need to read the book first, but also really good, and it's in Italian, so subtitles, but still. It also feels like it wouldn't be a favorites video if I didn't include some Octavia E. Butler. She is officially one of my all-time favorite authors. I only have a few more books to read by her, and this was one last one. This is a Blood Child. This is a short story collection, which I'm usually not a big fan of them because I found them, like, I find them like skeleton of stories. They're not really satisfying, but this one is so different. I feel like it really humanized the author even more for me because you get a little story and then you get the afterword and just her thoughts where the story came from, how it was for her at the time. They're not necessarily in order of when she wrote them, so you can definitely tell the difference between her earlier work and then the ones that inspired her full novels, which obsessed. Absolutely adore this. I also really enjoyed the last story because she attempts to write a utopia, which... <laughs> She's not a very uh, positive author, but in a good way. I feel like her work is really, really dark. It's always sci-fi, pretty much. Different, like, version, like, you have some historical fiction, first contact with aliens, post-apocalyptic, and it's all absolutely amazing and very dark, like I said, because she's using these topics to discuss serious topics. And then, deep down, there's always a message of hope, so it was really interesting to see what her version of a utopia would be. But yes, this whole book, absolutely adored it. Can't recommend this author in general enough. I will do a video raving about all of her work and letting you know where you should start, Kindred, and you know the order I would recommend personally, but yes this was good, but I wouldn't start with this book if you've never read anything by her, so. Am I cheating with the next book? Yes. Does it matter? No, it's my channel. I can do what I want. Um, <laughs> I read Moi qui n'est pas connu des hommes this year because I read I Who Have Never Known Men 
which is the English version last year in December. And I feel like I wasn't prepared to rave about it as much as I am now. I read this in April. So I had time. This is the French version. It was officially uh, originally written in French. It's my first language. So obviously I had to read it. And I liked it even more the second time around. So I'm gonna use this opportunity to continue raving about this because it deserves so much hype. This is also speculative fiction. I've really discovered that this is my jam. It is 100%. The story starts with these 40 women who are in a cage underground. They have no idea what happened, how they got there. And you're following the story through the eyes of the youngest woman. So she doesn't even remember a life prior to this. And she just grew up with these women in that cage. And then one day something happens and the door is left open and they escape. And it's not a story about like, you're going to get all the answers. It's definitely, again, spending a lot of time thinking and a lot of time searching. And I am obsessed. I'm absolutely obsessed. Like I said, I liked it a lot the first time around but even more so in the second time. I do think it was especially beautiful written in French, obviously, but seeing the narrator trying to figure out what it is to be human and the life and trying to figure out who she is through these weird circumstances was just amazing. You're gonna put the book down. It's only 200 pages, so you have to read it. You're gonna put it down and just stare at the wall for a long time and you're probably gonna want to reread it. So I can't recommend this enough. Again, I will keep obsessing over this and recommending it. One day I'll do a video about the best books I've ever read. This will be on there. We're going back to fantasy because like I said, I've had a really good year with fantasy and this is gonna be my most unpopular opinion. I'm ready for it though. Uh, this is the last book in the Queen of the Tearling series. Yes, this is The Fate of the Tearling and I completely understand why so many people hated the ending of this series. I, in theory, would be on your side, but it kind of worked for me. I'm not going to spoil anything, or I can in the comment section if you want to, but Book Queen is following uh, this young queen. She was hidden away until she was 19 to take back the throne. People were obviously trying to her beforehand, so that's why she was hidden, and there's a lot of political intrigue. I It feels like a really classic fantasy, and then book two becomes a lot weirder. There's like another genre mixed in. Again, I'm going to keep this vague to not spoil your experience, but book three is kind of a mix of that and you're trying to figure out what's going to happen in the end. And like I said, the ending is going to be controversial, but it worked. I feel like sometimes you have an exception to the rule. This is it. This is my exception and I really enjoyed myself. There's one sexy scene that um very cringe, but otherwise really enjoyed myself here. So would have you recommend this trying it, but do be prepared. Maybe you're gonna hate the ending, so. I also needed to rave about garden spells. I did let someone bore it. I don't do this often because I, I hate when people bring back the book in bad condition, but I liked it so much that I decided that I didn't care. <laughs> Plus it's my sister. If she breaks it, she's to me, she knows. Um, <laughs> This is a classic cozy fantasy. I have been looking for more of them. I've been really enjoying it. I feel like this year was also my cozy fantasy year. And this is like Practical Magic, the movie, like 2.0. It's very, very similar. You have these two sisters. They are witches. They grew up in this small little town. One of them ran away when she could. They're stepsisters, but still. There is a little bit of DV, so trigger warning for this. It doesn't last a big portion of the book, but I really enjoyed how their magic is different. They all have their own little thing. It's definitely heavier on the romance that I'm used to, but it worked for me. I was afraid it didn't age well, but book two was worse, to be honest, but this one wasn't bad, and I really found myself caring about, again, the character. In general, I just really like witches, modern time witches. I like small towns, and I feel like you got everything that I enjoyed in this one, so it deserved a special mention because I really enjoyed this. Again, if you enjoy Practical Magic, you basically have to read this because Practical Magic book, not great. It did not age well. This one was better. That's it. These are all the best books that I've read this year, and I just realized that they were all written by female authors. Coincidence? Maybe not. I did have some male authors in my most surprising books of the year, so, you know. But <laughs> I feel like I just have been enjoying very different books, especially, again, the fantasy section for me. I would love to hear your recommendations, and once again, if you have read any of these and you have your own opinion, feel free to leave them in the comment section. And that's it. Thumbs up, subscribe. I'll put on the screen some more videos of this series, and I will see you then. Bye.